हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई थिंक लाइक सर सो वी स्टार्ट गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल सेशन लास्ट मिनट हरिड सेशन दैट वी हैव अरेंज टेयर आई एम डॉक्टर संदीप शर्मा द डॉक्टोरियल पीडियाटिक फैकल्टी फॉर नीट पी जी एंड एफ एम जी एंड वी हैव डॉक्टर कलील अहमद बिदस सर इज आवर रेडियोलॉजी फैकल्टी एंड एन एमिनेंट स्ट्रेटेजिस्ट रिलेटेड टू नीट पी जी एज वेल एज एफ एम जी एग्जाम सो द पर्पज ऑफ दिस सेशन इज नॉट टू यू नो डू एक्टिव रिकॉल इट इज नॉट टू यू नो टॉक अबाउट एबस्ट्रैक्ट थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस based upon the recalls based upon the feedback by the students how the exam was what were uh, what the easier areas what were the difficult areas and what are the take home points from this exam sir over yes, to you good evening everybody and uh, i hope uh, all of you after a very prolonged uh, postponement of the exam and lot of preparation you finally have got relaxed and uh, i see many happy faces today from the students and uh, we are hopeful that you know you'll have a good result and this uh, session is mainly to look at the kind of uh, question that were asked in the exam the kind of you know pattern that the exam was conducted on we'll look at how the paper 1 was how the paper 2 was which subjects were tested more we'll also look at you know the issues that students faced during this exam and we'll go on sequentially and understand the kind of questions that were being asked in the exam so ho- how was your exam overall i mean if i can uh, hear you uh, if anybody of you have you know reta- attended the exam how do you feel the exam was good evening ashil khan sf right sunny hope you're all good and you had a good exam and uh, so beginning with the first insights the first thing that we asked students when they come out of the examination hall was how was their exam and uh, the general feedback for me that i received sir was a moderate exam so they felt uh, you know moderate to easy lot of one liners and lot of recall questions and uh, what was your uh, take from the students sir like the discuss- discussion with the students yes sir the feedback which i have got uh, a lot of students said that the paper 1 and paper 2 the difficulty level was variable uh, between them like the paper 1 was relatively easier uh, there were repeat questions although there were less d- uh, direct repeats but indirect repeats were a lot in the first paper the second paper was slightly lengthier also and there were certain topics sir from where multiple things were asked like for example from ca breast there were at least two or three questions similarly from meningitis there were two questions so if somebody has left out the topic of meningitis you are having a bad day but you have done meningitis topic like ca breast properly you had a possibility of getting two or three questions from the single topic correct so i think it was a mixed kind of paper i would say that uh, as per what uh, students have said to me between moderate to slightly difficult it was not unsolvable but moderate to difficult level overall if we talk about but at the same time i think uh, getting 150 should not be difficult yes. provided somebody is thorough with the last 5 year papers and is thorough with important selected topics from where questions are repeatedly asked yes sir uh, as sir mentioned you know there were topics which are repeated very frequently in the exam like maths in agrivis had a couple of questions on that and a uh, lot of uh, integrated questions were there so like lot of uh, anatomy was asked with images and uh, you know radiological images and uh, the questions were not uh, very straight forward to anatomy question there were a lot of image based uh, anatomy that was asked this time and uh, the first paper students were more happy in the morning i mean what uh, we could uh, get the feedback from the students is after the first paper many of them were very happy that lot of recalls were there so sir w- there is a huge importance of previous year questions and uh, recall questions to be done by the students what do you feel sir exactly sir we keep saying again and again you should be thorough with the last 5 to 7 year papers of fmg exam and by by being thorough we do not mean ki you simply remember the question and the answer you should be thorough with the topic itself like for example if you look at uh, 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 there the, there are topics from where questions are being asked again and again you can be sure that in any fmg exam there will be 3 to 4 questions from vitamins and if you are not thorough with the vitamins or their doses or their uh, you know side effects or their classic clinical features then again that is not something that uh, a good student would do so making errors uh, forgetting things that is fine but if you are thorough with the topic like vitamins you had almost four questions from vitamins directly or indirectly in the paper spread across the two papers 
yes sir and the, even you know biochemistry was uh, very easily asked easily. this time yes. it was not yes. very difficult yes. also yes and they have given a uh, good enough number of uh, pyqs and also very basic questions were asked sir yes. questions like kaffer cells were asked like yes, uh, very basic <coughs> things like what breast milk is contraindicated in like you know i think that's that's something very uh, most of the students must have got it right yes yes so galactosemia and all those things so it was a doable paper i would suggest so everybody should remember that they should never go wrong in anything that was asked before <laughs> you're going in a very important crucial exam so do not do anything you know wrong on the recall questions or pyqs or commonly asked topics and uh, sir what about the paper 2 uh, what was your uh, you know feedback from the students sir regarding the paper so the, so the general feedback was that the second paper was lengthier trickier tougher compared to the first paper uh, there were questions uh, there were topics uh, which were expected like if i talk about uh, my own subject pediatrics we know that kwashiorkor is going to be asked there was a question on kwashiorkor meningitis is going to be asked there was a question from there neonatal resuscitation something is going to be asked there was a question so uh, even if you had read it superficially and were thorough with the explanations you would have done well in those areas at the same time psm preventive and social medicine also called community medicine had some tougher questions when i say tougher the options were close by each other like there was a question regarding related to the uh, size of classrooms uh, now the exact recall is not there but students were saying that very close options were there related to the size of classrooms and in fact uh, two of the recall sessions had different answers yes. so uh, it becomes tricky in questions like this even obg was tougher sir yes. obg surgery OBG was not straightforward obg surgery psm but slightly tricky medicine is always tricky medicine is like an ocean always so there will always be areas where you will find them untouched but uh, these were the difficult areas as per uh, my feedback like the students are also mentioning it yeah so so there were questions which were uh, you know also tricky at the same time it was not a completely easy paper so they were uh, you know questions that tested your understanding of the concepts so go for a more conceptual approach and uh, don't go for rare things sir. the number of rare questions asked were less rare yes. questions were less yes. sir and even they did not ask lot of medical legal topics or uh, you know not the things sir. that they have to mostly memorize the ipc sections and all i mean, didn't see any of that even ecg and eeg graphs were not very much in the they were not paper. much sir yeah sir uh, sir at the same time i don't know whether it is correct or not i think uh, like uh, a lot of students uh, two of them has mentioned in the comments also medicine was slightly lesser like when i say slightly lesser the questions will be there but of course they will be overlapping topics with other subjects so there was a kind of you know slow integration where we can uh, see the examiners are trying to move the students into the next kind of you know uh, exam pattern yes. so that that hint we got in this exam yeah. lot of clinical uh, aspects were asked so like yes. even in uh, you know questions like very basic questions of uh, preclinical subjects always had heart failure what is improving the survival mm -hmm. so questions were all on the mechanism of action of drugs and uh, improving the survival of the patients and stuff and uh, could not uh, subject wise analysis on subject wise analysis sir anatomy there were less direct questions but lot of image based anatomy was asked there was image showing the medial epicondyle the back surface marking on the behind of the medial epicondyle they had to identify the nerve that was being damaged they had they saw uh, there was a image showing the ligaments around the spleen and they had to identify which ligament carries those uh, splenic vessels so the area which will have the splenic vessels were asked so it was more of a image based anatomy that was asked and uh, less direct questions and even in the discussions or even when we were having a discussion a few days back we had a youtube session with uh, dhavan sir and azam sir azam sir had mentioned that they would ask you openings of diaphragm there yes, and you had yes. a question on openings exactly, of diaphragm exactly exactly and even dhavan sir had mentioned about vocal nodule and that appeared in the exam that came that and came. edh i just mentioned that these are the questions that would come in the exam edh True. and all so they, those were like you know all three of us got a you know strike rate in that video mm -hmm. so it was some questions that you will get uh, very straight forward which you should not miss out so diaphragm openings i think were were being tested the image based anatomy was there physiology there was no clear uh, physiology question but uh, very basic concepts were tested and uh, there is uh, biochem was easier they asked about one jerk keys uh, and they asked uh, you know melanin is produced from tyrosine tyrosine right they asked you a nitric oxide derivative from arginine so questions which were much easier which most of you guys learn right so those were tested niacin was asked vitamin a xerophthalmia very frequent all of you should do those things right and uh, micro was also tested well sir like mm -hmm. they gave importance towards yes. uh, mucor mycosis you got a question on yes. mucor mycosis so recent topics and recent updates have to be focused 
you had a question on uh, this black escar for two things. Sir. One yes. is for mucormycosis also. They asked, I think, for bacillus anthracis anthrax also. Anthrax. Anthrax. Bacillus anthracis also. They asked in the cattle, uh, you know, worker and stuff. And even farmer was a uh, lot of uh, very standard questions like labetalol having alpha and beta action and lot of easier questions were there. A Actually, farmer had good beta sir. Yes, farmer and micro both were students were saying you know they could find a lot of questions. Lot on of that. questions. Yes. And even lot of questions on uh, respiratory system. The lung was discussed very yes, frequently in yes, the exam. Yes. Uh, like. Uh, I think I think uh, pharma was slightly uh, it was expected but the options were a bit close yes. uh, and there were a, a few atypical things atypical when I when we say they are not normally expected in a FMG exam so a few things related to pharma were there which were tougher microbiology pathology were usually on the easier side mm. patho was also easier sir yes and uh, sir uh, what about the clinical subjects what was your take on uh, the clinical subjects ENT octal Sir, ENT, Optel, uh, along expected lines, uh, uh, already all, uh, I think uh, the recall sessions which were done re recently, a lot of questions directly, not not uh, uh, directly but indirect questions were, top topic repeats were there in ophthalmology as well as ENT, like there was a safe strategy question on trachoma, yes, this is safe strategy has been asked so many times and uh, if you are getting that question wrong, something is wrong with our, uh, you know, preparation because it is a part of the past papers uh, directly or indirectly then uh, pediatrics my own subject pediatrics had uh, about 80 percent expected topics were there and all of them were solvable when i say solvable doesn't mean that you get 100 percent strike rate what it, i mean is that they were from areas if you have read well if you have revised well uh, i would say optha ent pediatrics were scoring compared to medicine obg surgery medicine was slightly lesser Surgery was tougher, OBG was tougher, community medicine was tougher in this paper and uh, then there were a few uh, questions from uh, the shorter subjects like orthopedics etc. So, they were, they were less in number. Anastasia and the short subjects they gave very standard questions. Yes, in yes. short subjects they did not trick a lot of you know lot of new things were not asked. So, do not go overboard when you are studying. Exactly. Like Anastasia they just asked about sevoflurane, right, they asked about the tracheostomy tube. And even in derma, they did not touch much, right? We keep telling everybody should know about psoriasis, should know about the lichen planus, the oral lichen planus. Mm -hmm. They had asked a repeat question in derma. There was a question on uh, glucagonoma causing necrolytic migratory erythema that was asked even in the last uh, previous exam. So, you should be very updated with the last three years papers. You had a question on necrolytic migratory erythema mm -hmm. that is seen in uh, glucagonoma that was again the same repeat that you have. Niacin is tested again and again, right? So, those things you should not miss out. That was in the Dhamma and very standard. So, you don't have to miss subjects and go to the examination. You do those subjects, standard questions will get through. And uh, in radio, radio was tricky, sir. Students are writing. The radio, I, I think most of it, we, we, if you have looked at the discussion videos, one was I, I found it was pretty doable. I mean, not very difficult. EDH, that is something nobody must have missed this thing. Mm -hmm. There was a question on coin in esophagus. This fa ENT faculty, we will also do it in all our videos. Coin in esophagus, you have to do a right the how to identify the coin in the esophagus what you do whether you do a bronchoscopy or esophagoscopy that was being asked there was a question on uh, you know asking a barium study and asking you to identify whether it is duodenum or jejunum and here i'm getting conflicting reviews many students say it was duodenum the arrow was towards the duodenum but some students also say it was uh, jejunum i'll sit down with the students and we'll come to a final recall we'll make recall videos of each of the subjects uh, going forward guys we just wanted to, you know, express our views and uh, share your opinions and feedbacks on the question. And uh, there was a question on uh, radiotherapy. There was one question on radiotherapy that which they asked, uh, which I feel by the wordings was a conventional uh, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. They asked whether it is a hyperfractionated, hypofractionated, or a conventional uh, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. The thing that was asked, or they said, five days a week, right? For five to six weeks, right? That should be a conventional radiotherapy, giving a dose of uh, about uh, 1.5 to 2 grays, uh, five days a week, the, the every day only once daily. If it is given, that is conventional. If you give more than uh, once a day, twice or thrice a day, BD or TID, that's a hyperfractionated radiotherapy. And if you give it in less time, instead of going for five to six weeks, if you are rushing through the process, right? You are giving uh, very earlier. That would be a accelerated radiotherapy. <laughs> so those questions were there. I think uh, the question was on conventional radiotherapy, guys. And sir, there were a lot of uh, overlapping topics, like there are topics which you can put in medicine also, pediatrics also, pathology also, pharma also. For example, there was a uh, topic on, there was a question on Guillain-Barre syndrome, 
medicine yeah. people also teach and pediatrics also it is there wilson's disease there was a question yeah. so it can be put in either of the two so if you put it in pediatrics you will find lesser of the medicine if you put it in medicine then you will find that the medicine questions were as much as they were the earlier uh, then von Gerich's disease glucose 6 phosphatase deficiency uh, it can be a biochemistry it can be a pediatrics the point is uh, see if you're a sincere student and you have identified the important topics and you have done them well even if you are weaker in a particular area or you find tougher questions in one area, you can still compensate from the other subjects. That doesn't mean you leave out uh, for, for future exams, you leave out other areas, but you need to have a balanced view and uh, expected topics. At the same time, sir, uh, one-liner th time, I think uh, the time for one-liners is gone because now questions are becoming more and more, uh, options are becoming closer. They are making two-line, three-line questions also this time and uh, those uh, earlier there was the consensus that you remember 1000 one-liners, 2000 one-liners and you will do well in FMG. I think that mindset also needs to change a bit. Yes, very much so. Going forward, you know, many of the juniors will be writing uh, next exams from probably from this December. So, do not, uh, you know, be in the comp. This exam was much doable, but uh, I feel this must be a blessing for the students who have written this exam. But going forward, even the last exam, we had a lot of clinical integration. Yes, the last yes. exam, we trained uh, the students in more of uh, clinical testing and a uh, lot of integrated and lengthy questions also can be expected in going forward in next. So, do not ne neglect your clinical subjects and your clinical integration of your basic subjects, guys. And uh, so, there are some issues also faced during this session in the uh, for the students. Uh, and uh, this was uh, something particularly unique for this session. Usually, NB was very supportive for eligibility, certificates, documents, but they were very rigid this time. And uh, sir, one thing what students, uh, what I feel has been done is many people fail to check emails. Yes. This is become, we when we had sent some people to the NB and this mm -hmm. showed us the list of mm -hmm. mails being sent to them and mm -hmm. no response from the student side. Mm -hmm. So, because we as doctors don't frequently check emails as we, you know, make that habit. When you are submitting your documents, when you are applying for your exam, see that you are giving a verified email keep your email and passports with you see the communication that you get on regular basis install the gmail and your yahoo whichever you're using on your phone so that any mail comes in you get the notification don't miss out on those notifications i feel some of the students you know could not get their hall tickets just because of the you know lack of communication lack of opening of the emails so that work yes. and we showed seven eight times that they mailed and the students did not upload the certificates it was an unfortunate thing and we must have been little more considerate but still you know some students missed out on getting their hall tickets on time they are going to open up probably in february first week the eligibility uh, window to get the certificates and uh, the documents ready so those who missed out please see that you know in the first week of february you get those things done and uh, sir the major issue in this session was the postponement of exam from initially it was december 17th yes and then shifted pre to december 4th causing lot of panic and lot of you know uh, anxiety in the students yes later on to jan uh, 20. 20. And uh, this fluctuation had bro broken down the momentum. Moment. Yes. And uh, but still, sir, many of the students could uh, gain back, right? Uh, sir, do you think the preparation would be ideal all through six months, or they will gonna come phases where they have to fight through? Sir, uh, it is, sir, seeing from a practical perspective, it can never be a you know uh, moving from point A to point B in a straight line. Life is never like that. Whether you are preparing for entrance exam, you are preparing for any other uh, than than. Uh, academic exam or you are uh, going around in your day to day practice there will always be ups and downs there will always be unexpected changes the point is you should be having that adaptability factor in you a lot of people get start panicking at the last moment a lot of people start uh, go into that negative domain where they start questioning why is it happening to me why is the fate so wrong with me there are things we cannot control we should focus on the things which we can and what we can is number of revisions identifying topics, identifying our strength, making it even stronger, identifying our weaknesses and working on that and spending our energy over there. I think if we go with a positive mindset, uh, I think I think it works really well irrespective of which exam you are targeting and that is true for FMG exam also. So, we should focus on the things which are in our control. At the same time, sir very rightly said, uh, even for future exams, so those of you who will be clearing your FMG exam, now you will be sitting for the NEET PG oblique next exam, whatever is there. So, when you sit for that exam, be don't live under a rock, be active. You are a doctor, you are a professional, you need to be thorough with the social media, you need to read your mails, you need to be, you know, uh, responsible now. So, uh, 
forgetting the date to fill the form, not seeing the document being asked from you. Uh, all of us are not kids anymore, so it is time to be responsible. There is always a point where we can learn and there is always a yes. uh, second time. Life doesn't end with the one exam. But at the same time, I think, sir, this exam uh, was not bad, was yeah. not as bad as, yes, you yes. know. We have seen students, you know, having literally struggling after the exam. But this time, there are a lot of happy faces, glowing faces. And uh, really, we all, uh, from the whole faculty team, we all hope that, you know, you all come out on the successful side. And you don't have to do everything correct, guys. Just because, you know, you'll get flashbacks that you have missed out on some questions or you have done some easy questions wrong, do not spoil your mood. You will get your 150, right? So it's not just, we focus on what we went wrong only. So that is the reason, you know, don't spoil it and don't, you know, you need a very, very much needed break. You had an extended exam preparation. Many of the questions were doable and many of the students, I feel, you know, I can sense that thing. We could palpate that thing that, you know, many of them have done a very good exam. They are just waiting for the results to come in their favor and that would surely happen, guys. Okay, all our, all our blessings and all our prayers are with you that you have a, you know, a successful result also. And sir, any take home message for future aspirants and with next coming in for the FMG students, what should you think their uh, approach should be especially? Be thorough with the past five year papers. When I say papers, it is not only MCQs, but the topics themselves. Number one. Number two, don't overdo rare things, rare syndromes, rare drugs and uh, shorter subjects. When I say short, I am not saying don't read them. We don't read them. Every single drop, every single question is going to matter. But don't overdo. Don't you like you want to be an orthopedician? Fine. But you don't need to read Campbell orthopedics for that. Right read it when the time comes for now five to seven questions expected questions maximally can be expected even in future exam i'm saying maximally so read accordingly because bulk is going to be there from your usual suspects medicine surgery obg pharmacology pathology uh, to a certain extent yes pediatrics also uh, although i ent was slightly lesser this time but almost all of them were close to 90 percent yes. solvable so usually also if you look at past papers about nine to ten questions are asked from them because a lot of overlap is also there so sir please sir so with next coming up your clinical subjects become very very important especially yes. people who i think most of the juniors would be graduating and coming here by around july and stuff and uh, the first exam that we're going to face is December. So let us be prepared that we are going to prepare for next rather than, you know, going in a conventional manner. Uh, see that you are all, I think we should be getting the guidelines by March, sir, after the NEET PG It is expected, yes. yes. It is expected that by March there should be clarity. Yeah. So after the exam of NEET PG, you should have a little more clarity. So do not uh, ignore your clinical service, especially starting from ENT. ENT, Opthal, PSM, right, all the subjects that were mentioned, the six subjects that were mentioned in the okay, next subjects, they become very, very important, right, along with their medicine and allied subjects. Allied subjects in the sense for medicine allied subjects, you have derma, you have psychiatry, you have, these are the uh, allied subjects in uh, medicine and for surgery allied subjects, you have radio, you have anesthesia, right, ortho. ortho. So, do these subjects at a high priority. Let us wait. If there is FMG, we can always add on to the subjects that we are not doing. But see that you are thorough this with these subjects in detail so that when you are coming in July and you are having to face the exam, you will not be too panicked to memorize a lot of things because each of them will require a lot of effort and a lot of understanding. So, see that you are very good in your final years. So if you are listening to me in your final years, these subjects should be your top-notch subjects when you graduate and come, come back here. And... Uh, Sir, about June, they are asking whether it would be FMG or next. Uh, see, we should not uh, go into conjectures at this moment, but practically speaking, it will be FMG exam. Like if I have to bet my money, I will I'll bet on FMG. It, yeah. it is likely to be FMG. Most there, there is no, there is no there is less no, time for, yeah. uh, to conduct everything. Uh, there is a Supreme Court ruling also. Uh, yeah, it was related to uh, super speciality exam last year, where they have... Uh, very clearly mentioned to the government of India that if there is a change in the pattern of any national exam, you have to notify it at least six months before. So, six months, this is already 18 January. So, you can expect a FMG exam to happen. Most likely FMG. So, the people who are preparing for June exam, prepare for all the 19 subjects like what we are, whatever is happening for like so far, whatever subjects have been done, 19 subjects and all. But people who are graduating in June, see that your clinical subjects are strong and we'll get the final guidelines. Once the final draft and final guidelines are there, we'll update you accordingly also. And uh, 
some questions that I would want you to run through. Like there was a question on heliotrope rash that was asked, dermatomyositis. There was uh, they're giving you a radiograph and they asked you to count the rib. And uh, we teach that in our respiratory radiology how to look at the ribs, anterior rib, posterior rib, right? Which rib is that? So EDH question, question on oral lichen planus being pre-malignant, psoriasis was asked, a cartilaginous cap that was there in osteochondrome. I'll just go through the questions. We'll do a subject-wise recall just like that. A negative birefringence, this was in gout. Remember P4P, positive is in pseudogout, right? And uh, negative birefringence is in gout. So remember that. There are a lot of questions on lung, right? Respiratory was heavily tested. Do your system of uh, respiratory system properly. And there are some very favorite and uh, doable questions, Aulai appearance, Richtenberg appearance. There were pedigree charts being asked. Uh, this yes. time in FMG, they, they gave this is a new thing. This is a new thing, yes. In yes. FMG, they would never ask uh, pedigree, pedigree charts. Chart. They were asking this thing, Kwashiorkor, diaphragm opening, I said, splenic vessels, breastfeeding contraindication, the types of placenta were asked. I think uh, uh, different types of placenta. Mm -hmm. We had questions of uh, Bogdalex hernia, multiple myeloma. There was herpes zoster image. There was uh, as they were asking you what is the investigation of choice for uh, neuroendocrine tumors, right? And the pedo orange, uh, well, the reason for pedo orange was asked. The question on sinus, okay, maxillary sinus on CT scan identification was there. The anterior limbovenal capsule, sevoflurane was asked. Cleft palate, what is the cause for cleft palate embryologically, right? All of these were tested. And in micro, they asked about dimorphic fungi, muca micro. The dimorphic fungi, I think they gave sporotrichosis there. And uh, mucamycosis, I told you about cutaneous anthrax. There was vocal nodules, coin in the esophagus. There was this radiograph that we discussed in all the you know sessions we have done on coiling YouTube also. The, the coiling of nasogastric tube, right? On the radiograph, the tracheal fistula was asked. Q so far score, one jerkies, uh, good pasture was asked, masthenia. So very routine topics, nothing rare. Don't go for fancy stuff. Don't go for rare stuff just because, you know, don't burden yourself with lot of information. All of these are standard. Horseshoe kidney on a CT scan, PSGN, right? Having hypocomplementemia. These are all uh, must know topics and stuff. So see that you concentrate on all those topics. There were questions on McNaughton rule, custodial death being investigated by the magistrate, right? Uh, or copper T3AT, T3 I think they asked you the half-life, right? What is the half-life or 10 years, infant mortality rate, the denominator for it. And uh, some questions, some images, right, the, on radiology. This was epidural hematoma that was asked. There was, they asked you how to count the ribs, right? So please remember the posterior ribs are horizontal and anterior ribs are oblique. So when you count the ribs, please go through completely. Do not, you know, count the ribs uh, randomly and again and again. So always count the ribs from the very beginning. The posterior ribs will be horizontal and anterior ribs will be oblique. And the, many students say that it was uh, fourth posterior rib that was asked. So you had to count the ribs properly. The posterior ribs are horizontal and the anterior ribs are oblique. And they asked you about fourth rib. Fourth posterior rib was the question. What do you guys think? What did you write for that question? I mean, I think uh, uh, which one? I think you guys will you know remember it first, <laughs> second, third, fourth, right? And whatever you marked is correct. Okay, don't worry about any answer and all. I hope that what you marked is the right answer because we we don't know. We haven't seen the paper, and all of them have that confusion. So whatever you have marked is the right one that you have marked. Okay, so be relaxed. You have worked extremely hard for the last six months. The one sir is messaging, you know, sir, <laughs> please ask students to relax tonight. Okay, so I hope you all got the message that you know, please take some rest. Have See, a very. Hard it has work been thing. done, sir. Yes. See, you need to understand the exam has been done. Yeah. Right. You can't change it. If you have done well, just just relax yourself. Even if you have not done well for X Y Z reason, it is okay. The next exam is next. When I say next, it is not capital next. It is small next. Next, next FMG exam will be expected in June. Learn from your mistakes. We all make mistakes. If I look back into my life, in I, my MBBS, I have made a thousand mistakes. In my entrance exam, I have made thousand mistakes. In my personal life, I have made mistakes. There is not a single person in, in this world who can look back and say, I did not make mistakes. The point is, don't repeat your mistakes. Learn from them. Work on your deficiencies. You will get another chance in the next three or four months if something wrong happens. But personally, what I feel is uh, this time the pass percentage should rise. Sir, what is your take on that? Definitely. This will have much better percentage than the previous exams. Stay hopeful. Enjoy the much needed break. Spend time with your family. Do not, you know, I have seen students sticking back, sir. 
they mm. want to go only after the results come yes. and they miss out on a precious time where they could be with the family because again once internship starts they can't get this kind of free time in uh, your medical course you'll be busy mm. with your internships internships are hectic mm -hmm. you'll have your hospitals your pg preparation coming up so this is a very much needed break and all of these are students who have never been to their you know festivals or families or mm -hmm. relatives they have been abroad for five six years please do not do that i want all of you to go back home right uh, take rest for a few days and relax with your family and friends they're also important part of your life okay results will keep coming okay the exams will keep happening and all every few days we'll have some or the other exam so don't miss out on this uh, good time that you will get relax yourself and uh, whatever you know happens be ready to face it and go ahead and uh, you know hopefully you know you'll be uh, on a successful note going forward in life having new things and new experiences coming up your way yes and yes. Uh, anything uh, uh, we'll all come up with the recall sessions uh, i think i think we'll be trying to uh, start recording recall sessions from uh, tonight itself from the studio itself and over the next couple of days you should expect uh, a lot of recall session videos uh, this will be helpful for you to understand where you stand it will also be helpful for the future aspirants to see uh, where the questions are coming from and for, for people who have not done well to learn from their mistakes build upon it and get that you know direction uh, so that the, see june is not far away so we'll start with the recall sessions uh, for all the subjects so you'll stay uh, stay connected to the dr hill's youtube channel we'll be posting one after the other the regular sessions by starting from probably tomorrow i think by tomorrow morning we should be able to start off different yes. subjects right yes, yes 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 so we'll share you all these subjects and please uh, do have a liberal uh, no relax sleep today do not worry too much about what you did right what you did wrong 150 is doable exam was doable right what you have you it doesn't matter if you have done some silly mistakes and all everybody does a silly mistake right mm -hmm. so don't keep on keep on you know bothering yourself with few silly mistakes that you have done most of the paper will be fine for you and uh, do share something you remember the, from your side for individual faculties of dr trials like something you can you know remember out and do write to us once you get your results there a lot of work that was done you know throughout the team on the youtube channels also there were a lot of expected question series by the faculties lot of discussions so we would be happy to hear like how your results came up and uh, do write in to all of us different faculties for the individual subject recalls it will help us to formulate and come closer to the recall also and uh, stay blessed and uh, i think any final comments sir nothing uh, next few hours stay away from all books all recalls uh, including the ones we we also put because this is time for you to spend time with yourself people who matter who truly matter your parents your family your siblings uh, your crush whosoever he or she is just spend time with them talk to them even if you have nobody else to talk to it's okay netflix yourself some good food some good music and a good sleep and then decide maybe in a couple of days where you stand and which direction you have to go relax yourself yeah take a take a much needed break guys all the best and uh, wishing you all a successful result going forward we'll meet up soon okay god bless you guys god bless thank you. you so much thank you thank you sir thank you sir